Kitchen Table Productions, a show all about living well with low carb. And what are we making today, Torin? Ribs! Ribs, yes! We're going to show you how to make a wonderful, yummy, delicious, melt-off-the-bone ribs. Yes. yes! You like them, don't you, Torin? Yeah. Yeah, all right. We're going to show you how to make those right now. Now our hands are clean. We've got the soap out of our sink. We've got here is one vacuum-packed container uh, of, of ribs. ribs. Yeah, that's right. So you want to give me the scissors? And I'm going to cut these open. Okay. Here you go. Good job. Get this away from me, Torn? Yes. Good. Thank you very much. And I'm just going to wash this with cold water. Whenever uh, you get pieces of meat, especially pieces that have a bone in them, a lot of times you'll get bone meal uh, stuck along the edges and on the meat. And it's just not very appetizing to, to bite into that little thing. Because it's, you know, it's like gritty, sandy. Who needs that, right, Jordan? Yeah. Yeah. Sheet. Yep. Yep. Now we're gonna take our ribs. Yes. And put it on that tin foil. Yep. Now we're gonna have it dry. Let me turn. Now we're gonna cover this with some seasoning, some salt. We need to make our rub. This is what we're gonna do. We've got our jar here, and we're gonna add the ingredients of our rub. And I have you do that. So I'm gonna start you off with. Three tablespoons of Splenda Torn. Put that right on in there. This is yep. Splenda. Yep, very good. Next, we go for the half a tablespoon of salt. That's kosher salt and a half a tablespoon of chili powder. Dump that right on in. Good job. And finally, we're going to finish up with a quarter teaspoon of each of cayenne. Go ahead, Torn. Old Bay, thyme, and onion powder. In they go. Now put the lid on. Oh. <laughs> Yep, there we go, like that. And give it a good shake. Just shake it really hard. All right, do it on camera so they can see. Woo, yep, and he's shaking them up really good. Very good. Aha, that <laughs> looks delicious. Yeah. Mmm, smells good too. Let's smell it. Let's smell it. Mmm. Mm. Let's sprinkle some on the back side here. Yeah. <coughs> it's like a sauce. Yeah. Put this over. Sprinkle this on the front side, the meaty side. Yeah, the delicious that, side. Yeah, let me rub that on in, Torn. Rub it on in. There we are. Ooh. We're just going to use this all up. Oh, what? <laughs> Why can't I just pour that all the way in? Yeah, there we go. Put this back to the back side. Mm -hmm. I'm going to finish this using the rest of this off. You can be nice and generous with this. Just rub it all over. This one. Yep. You want to end up with the meat side down. You want a nice big thing of tin foil because we're going to enclose this. We're going to make a nice little pocket out of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we finally cook this, we're going to actually put some liquids in here. So we want this to be a relatively liquid type container. And then we'll close up our lid. Yes. And this part we're actually doing the night before. We'll come back and cook this tomorrow. I'm just going to roll this down, just like that. Mm -hmm. It ends in a bit. That. And we're going to take our ribs and we're going to put this in our refrigerator until tomorrow. Yeah. Alright, here it's our day two. We're going to have our ribs today for some lunch, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah, it's an early, kind of early-ish in the morning. It takes about three hours at least to cook these ribs, so give yourself plenty of time. It's going to be a low, slow cooking method. So we're going to start first here today by making up our cooking liquid. Right there. Yeah. Yeah? All right, here is our ribs. It's been sitting overnight with that rub on it in our refrigerator. And we're going to start by cooking, making up our cooking liquid here. I'm going to start with a half a cup of a dry white wine. We're going to add some more sweetness by adding a tablespoon of Splenda. Right there. We're going to follow that with a tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. And then a tablespoon of cider vinegar. And finally, we're going to add in a one clove, one nice large clove of crushed garlic. Stir all that up. So I stir it all up mm -hmm. until it makes it all delicious. Yeah. <laughs> Just it's all nice and stirred in together. That looks like a sauce. Yeah. It's going to be our sauce when we're done. I'm just going to open up one end of these ribs. Make a nice little funnel with it. it looks more delicious. Yeah, it does look pretty good. And Torn's going to pour that right on in, aren't you, Torn? Yes. Yeah. I'll take that. Mm -hmm. 
pour that liquid right in there. All of it? All of it, right on in. Good job. All the garlic, everything goes in. Fabulous. So we give this a tilt to get that liquid all the way down from one end to the other. And that tastes closed. delicious, I think. <laughs> like yes, it. it does. You want a nice tight seal, so most of that liquid will stay nice in. You'll see I've got it on this baking sheet. This is in case any of that liquid does get out. I've got these nice uh, high sides to help keep any of the liquid in. Now I'm going to put this in my 250 degree oven and I'm going to cook it for three hours before I even check on it. It has been three hours and now we're going to check on our ribs. Here. Yeah. And now we open it and see how we're very careful if you're doing this because yes, this is hot. Yeah. The bones should wiggle around in their sockets a bit. Yeah, just kidding. They look like they could probably use maybe a little half an hour more, but we can go ahead and take off some of this juice and start working on getting our sauce together. Yeah. I'm actually going to wrap my ribs back up here, just like that. Yep. If you could, if you wanted to, just put holes in the bottom and, and let it drip, kind of drain out in one spot. Yeah, I like this better. It's just a little less messy. You see, we have a lot more juice coming out of that now than we did going in. There should still be plenty of uh, liquids left in here to finish our meat off. So, and I'm going to move this to my stovetop. You'll see that there's a nice little layer of fat on here. We actually want to try to get as much of that off as possible. If you have a gravy strainer, go ahead and send it through that. Try to get that some of that fat off of there. If not, you can also put this in your freezer, try to get that top layer to freeze up, and then you can just kind of skim it off easily that way. All right, we've got our ribs here. They're out of the oven. I let them sit for a little while, by about 10, 15 minutes, just cover it in their bag. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to slice each one of these individually before I coat them in our sauce. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that was sliding right out of the bowl. <laughs> I'm just taking that tin foil and I put it back on my baking dish. So I'm going to broil on it in a moment. I've got here a nice sharp knife. I'm just going to go down between each rib. And I'm going to put all of these in a nice big bowl. Now I'm going to turn my attention to my sauce. Now I have here some of my sugar-free ketchup. This is ketchup I've made myself. If you want the recipe for it, you can find it at kitchentableproductions.net. And I'm going to add about two or three tablespoons of this right here into my sauce. I'm not going to bother measuring, I'm just going to squeeze it out. Yep. And I'm trying to reduce this liquid down to about half of what it was when I started. Alright, now this is about what we're looking for. See all these nice thick bubbles? It's not as thick as a sugar-based sauce, but it still gets a certain amount of thickness to it. Now I'm just going to take this and pour it right over the top of my ribs. Beautiful. So I'm just, just going to shake these to coat them. Whee! Right there are my ribs. I've propped them up, as you can see, one against the other, meat side up. And I'm not going to tell you how long to leave this in your broiler. You're just going to have to watch it. That's just the way broilers work. Ah, there we go. Beautiful. Well, that's our show on ribs. We uh, are going to enjoy those, aren't we? Yes. Yummy and tasty, so it's time for our lunch. Mm -hmm. For this recipe and many others, including that recipe for the ketchup, please visit our website, kitchentableproductions.net. I'm Jessica Brevoort. I'm Tori Brevoort. And this has been Kitchen Table Productions.